All right, guys, here it is. FDM or resin printing? What's the difference and what's changed? Okay, guys, here it is. So we're gonna talk about the difference between FDM printing and resin printing and which one suits your needs. Now, if you're not sure what FDM printing is, that's when you have filament directly driven into the hot end and it comes out almost like a glue gun going around the bed. Now, whether the bed moves on a bed slinger and the, the gun just goes back and forth or whether you have an XY printer and we're going around and around, we're building up layer by layer and that's how I print most of my cosplay pieces. That being said, I have used resin printers before. And in fact, there would have been a time where I would have said that resin printers were better for quality and detailed pieces. That's not exactly wrong anymore. If you want high detail pieces, you're still going to get that level with a resin printer. But over the last few years, we know that FDM printers have continued to advance. We had Bamboo start bringing out their flagship printers a few years ago, and they started going crazy. And with every little update, every little change, the speed of a printer for FDM is now almost on par with a resin printer, if not better. And the detail can almost match. Now, I do say almost. You're not going to get the exact same level of detail out of an FDM printer as you do a resin printer, and you're not going to get it without layer lines. So you do have to post-process prints from an FDM printer more than you would from a resin printer. Now, what I'm talking about when I say post-processing, I'm saying that when you take all these layer lines that you get on an FDM printer, and all these join lines, if you're going to be putting things together, which you would still have to do with most resin printers because the bed size is significantly smaller on most. But to get rid of all these lines and things, we come in and we sand them down and we filler prime them and we put putty in them and we use a whole lot of processes to take these and make them clean and shine like we have with our Iron Man suit behind me. And if you want to see how to do that, guys, I have several videos that I will link below on how to post-process prints. But then what is the difference between a resin printer and an FDM printer? Now, with a resin printer, you have a bed of liquid resin. It comes in a bottle like this, and you pour it straight into the bed, and the plate gets lowered into it. What's happening there is it actually lowers down into the resin and underneath you have a screen of UV lights. Now the program tells it where to cure the resin. So it turns on very particular lights to cure a layer at a time. Now unlike FDM printing where you're going around and building up that layer, it cures an entire layer in one go. It lifts it up and comes back down. It's usually about two seconds per layer depending on how you print and your print settings. Don't come at me with that. But what happens there is it squashes the layer of resin between that screen and the plate and it pulls up and pulls up and pulls up and it looks like if you put it in a high speed mode like it's pulled the print out of a nice liquid bed of resin almost like a uh, reverse melting a terminator robot it's really cool to watch especially if you put it in high speed mode but so what that's allowing is actually these smaller layers they're finer they're much smoother. You're not getting 0.4 mil per layer like you would with an FDM printer. You're going smaller, which means you have less layer lines. They are building up tiny, tiny amounts, so you don't actually see very many layer lines. I say very many because on a lot of resin printers, especially in the hobby space, if you're looking at the lower level cost printers, you are still going to see some layer lines depending on what you use. But guys, that means a lot less post-processing. So you will just still have to do a little bit of sanding. And if you want, you can hit it with filler primer and go over it. But it may take one shot instead of five. So it's quicker to post-process. Awesome. And as I stated before, it has higher detail. There was a point in time where I would have stated, and everyone would have stated, that if you're going to print something small, like a model for a game like D&D or Warhammer, then you have to go with a resin printer. And I would have stated that. There is a time when I agreed with that. I have 
for resin printers myself, guys, and I used them primarily for printing minis at one point. And I did some of the smaller detailed pieces on things like Iron Man's, and I did some uh, lightsabers. But that's not the case anymore, guys. And this is not on a bamboo printer. This is on the Creality K1. So you can get even finer detail on a bamboo printer. But that detail, I don't know if it's picking up in the screen, but I have the detail of her hair. I have the detail of all the feathers, the tiny little feathers on the bird, the face, everything. This is not resin printed, guys. This was FDM printed in under 10 minutes. How cool is that? Whereas five or six years ago, that would not have been possible. You could have printed minis, but they would not come out like that. Now, if I hit that with just a little bit of primer, not too much, I don't want it to build up on something so small, but a little bit of primer, and then I go in with paint, that is going to turn out no different to if I had a resin printed piece. And I love that. As I said, technology has changed, guys. This is the lightsaber that I printed this morning, a Kylo Ren lightsaber. It has some very detailed parts. This printed in like four or five pieces that just stuck together and the high detail on this thing is insane. This was not done on a resin printer. This was done on the Bamboo A1 in under seven hours for the entire thing. That's insane, guys. So what I'm saying here is not that FDM is now better than resin, because no, you will still get better detail and you may even get better speed depending on the resin printer you get. But I am saying that there is now competition. Before, you would have said FDM did certain things like big prints and helmets and cosplay and everything. You wouldn't have necessarily done that with a resin printer. Why? Because of the cost. This costs about $30 a bottle, if not more sometimes. Whereas this, at a time, was $30 a roll, you can now get for less than $15 for a kilo. I can get two full Iron Man helmets and more out of this. I could maybe get an Iron Man faceplate out of this. There's a large difference in price, guys. So again, FDM wins out here. So why do I still stick with resin then? I do still use resin printers from time to time, and the main reason is it is stronger, guys. I don't print with carbon fiber. I don't print with specialized you know, 3D printing things for my FDM and specialized filaments. I use nice, pretty filaments, and I use cheap PLA that I can get online for less than $15 a roll. And that's because I'm not throwing things at this. I am not running in front of a tank with it. I may be running one over with a car very soon or hitting it with a cricket bat. Stay tuned for that. But I'm not doing that with my cosplays and things, guys. The things that I want to be stronger, and I do print some things to be stronger, would be phone mounts, clips for the car. I go for wheel driving a lot, and I like to make things for the car. I make things for storing things in the garage, on the shelves, on the workbenches, things like that. I want those to hold more. I want them to hold more weight. Even things on the wall for mounting different things. I will then do those out of resin. I don't do them for the detail as much anymore as I do for the strength. The strength of a resin printer is better guys what about the cost so i've spoken about some of the costs of fdm printers before and some of the ones in 2025 i will be bringing out a video soon talking about all the changes happening and all the updates that we're getting on fdm printers and different printers in 2025 but how much does it cost for say a k1 or an a1 or even if you want to just start out with something like an ender 3 you can grab something like an Ender 3 on special for less than $200 in Australia. The A1, however, is $500 on the Bamboo website, which I still think is a great price for what the Bamboo A1 is. The K1, you're going a little bit more if you can get one. Still, guys, run down to JCAR. They're roughly six to $700, but you can find them on special from time to time, and specials will be coming up as we get closer to Easter, so keep your eye out for that. Also, JCAR don't yet stock the K2, so I'm hoping when that comes out, the K1 will come down a little bit, but that's just me and my hopes. But then, what can you get in the resin space for that price? Elgu have their Mars for less than $200 now. You can get it online and you can go down to JCAR and pick up a resin printer for $199. You can get the Elgu, the Creality. They're all pretty much the same as same. They're 
they're just clones of each other when it comes to the resin world. We've seen that in the FDM world, but in the resin world, it's a little more obvious. Maybe they changed the color. Maybe the software is slightly different. In the end, guys, resin printers are resin printers, and they're pretty much the same. Most of them come with the similar size bed. Some of them, like the Max, come a little bit bigger. The Mono X that I have is a little bit larger again. That's 180 by 130 from memory. It's still not matching up to the 300 by 300 bed sizes I have, or the 256 by 256 you get on a bamboo printer. So the size does still limit you guys on most resin printers. And when they catch up, that will be amazing. But for the price range, they haven't caught up yet. You can get resin printers that are just as large, but not in that price range. But you can grab a resin printer for the same price as an Ender 3 or the same price as a Bamboo Labs A1 if you want to go down the resin path. And if you're only printing things like minis and you are very, very specific on the detail and how you want to paint them, then by all means, go with a resin printer. It's going to be stronger, it's going to be easier to paint, and it's going to have less post-processing. But if you're going to be going into cosplay and printing things like Iron Man suits or droids from Star Wars, then I recommend you go with an FDM printer, guys. That's it. That's the big differences. That's the big things that I've seen over the years and the big changes. FDM is really starting to match on detail and speed, and resin is just stronger, guys. But if you have different thoughts on this, let me know. Stick whatever you think down in the comments below. I do... I do answer all of the questions and comments below. If you have a specific question on 3D printing um, or cosplay, please chuck it down below or send me a message and I will jump in and answer. I may even make a video about it. But for me this week, guys, that's it. I hope you have a great week. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as I said, if you differ on your opinion, this is just my opinion and my experience with all the printers I've used over the years. Let me know what you think. Thank <laughs> you.